Lord. Hallelujah. A blessed Sunday morning to all. Welcome to our service. We pray this morning that the Spirit of God will just move among us as we welcome His presence today. Shall we all stand please for a moment? The Psalmist David says in Psalms 107, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for His good, for His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he have redeemed from the hands of the enemy, and gather them out of the, the land from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For God satisfied the longing of soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Father, in the name of Jesus, we welcome your presence in our midst this morning. Lord, our hearts is waiting to hear from you this morning. We pray for a special anointing upon your people, upon your man's servant, as he delivered the word today. Give us hear, ears to hear what you are saying to us, God. Father, we are grateful for what you have done. And you love us when we were unlovable. And we just come this morning to give you a note of praise, honor, and glory. For you are the one that is worthy of our praise. We thank you. We praise you. And we glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. For his goodness, oh, that men will praise the Lord. For his goodness, oh, that men will praise the Lord. For his goodness, oh, that men. this morning you don't have nothing to praise him for but I praise him just to waken me up this morning for the breath that I breathe this morning I know my breath is alone 
So I'm going to take the opportunity and the privilege to give God the glory. Hallelujah. Thank Him for the rain. Thank Him that you are able to walk this morning to come to Byron's spot to praise Him. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Praise God. Brother Connie, will you come and help me sing a song this morning? Look on your sheet. We have two songs today. First one will be Praise Him, Praise Him. Jesus, oh bless Him. Praise Him. Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing on his wonderful love proclaim. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. We're going to do one more song. 
Hallelujah. Since Jesus came into my heart, at the back page of your bulletin. Change in my life has been brought since Jesus came into my
for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. At this time, I'm going to call our pastor, Pastor Sitton William. Wilson and Williams is the same name. It means son of will. Resolute and defend. Resolute defender. So thank you very much. How many of you are glad to be alive today? How many of you wish you were dead? Say amen. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. It's so good to be alive. And well, time hard, it is rough. Wars are around the place. But we still love life. We still love life. And so I want to welcome every single one of us here today. Do we have any first-time visitor to First Assembly? No, not under the tent, but at First Assembly Church. This is our regular service do we have any first time visitor here yes. just stand and give us your name yes put your hands together for him yes who else do we have we have he's the same name he's the same name here yes i want us to go around this morning and shake hands hug up or what have you and let's just greet everybody. But before we do that, I want the board members, our board members who are here, I want to meet with you a few minutes after service. There are some things I would like to discuss with you. Let us now go around and let us shake hands and let us greet everybody. Please stand up, please stand up and move around and greet everybody. We want to greet those who are online, those who are watching us, and Zoom, and wherever else, not Zoom, and YouTube, and wherever else they're watching from. We just want to greet everybody. Please come back together now. And I want to greet um, our brother James, a long standing member for many years. He has not been able to come out much. He lost his daughter. Not to know. Raise your hand, Brother James. Let us put our hands together and let us uh, greet him. Thank you for coming out this morning. Praise God. Back to you, Brother Sage. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have a special 
Praise Dance by Kevin. Take Jesus, I, I can take 
Praise God. Thank you, Kevin. The, bless, the best place to put our lives is in the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank our pastor this morning to allow, allow our men to take the service. I know that our men are few, but we have to get up and work. Because people are dying without Christ, right? So, so I, let me say this to the men. Rise up, O oh men of God, has done with blessed things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the King of Kings. Ladies, we are challenging you, but we have we filled this place with men. You know? So those, those of you who are single, right? Look out, you know. Look out and have expectation, okay? God is going to move among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to honor God with our gifts this morning. With our tithes and offering. And we are going to ask Brother Lionel and Brother Elkins to come. You're going to do a walk up offering this morning. And I'm going to ask ah, this beautiful lady smiling there with a pink on her head and a pink sweater. <laughs> yes, we had, we had a container for the offering. Do we have them available? Praise God. Go to line up. Ask the Lord blessing. Rhonda, come. Sing an offering, sir. It's men's service, but you're part of our men's group. You're Sister Diane. Okay. Brother Linus is going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this morning to bringing us together again, giving us a blessed week. Watch over us, protect us. Without you, we could not be here this morning. Isn't it beautiful to be here together in one in the Lord? Amen, amen. As children of God. Father, I pray that you bless this offering as we are about to give it back to you. It's not us, it's not ours, it's yours, Father God. Hallelujah. And we say thank you for providing, thank you for blessing, thank you for protecting, thank you for all what you do for us. Because without you, we cannot do nothing without you. And with you, we can do all things through you. Father, I pray that you bless this offering that you can do your work and go where it's supposed to go, Father God. Father, I pray that you bless this service, bless the men, bless the musician, bless everyone who are here. Bless this ground, Father God, that it can be used to what it's supposed to do, Father God, to the glory of you. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Lina. God bless you. Okay, Brother Lina, which side you want to come first? God is good, good, good. He has done me well. God is good, good, good. He has done me well. Oh, my soul, rise up and praise
this time we're gonna have a special by Brother Creighton. Praise the Lord. I realize that the woman voice and the man voice is two different things. Yeah? We going down to the bottom and she going up there. <laughs> oh, praise his name. But you know something? All of us have a voice. And all of us are expected to praise the Lord. You say, whatsoever your hand find to do, do it with all your might as unto him. Don't go and say, Lord, I could have do better, you know. No, no, no. Say, I did everything. I always remember the story with David. The woman looked at him and said, Boy, David, if they did play that music a bit, little bit longer, you'd have danced off your pants to now. Eh? Yeah. Because he was going on bad. Yeah. And we come to church, and if we can jump up and praise the Lord in church, I don't think you're going outside there in the public and praising the Lord, you know. You have to, this is your practicing ground. This is your ground to get it perfected. So when you go out outside there, he says, I don't want you to be no secret agent. I want you to be a light shining that when men see, they glorify me. And he gets the glory. So we are his foot soldiers. Because he says the time is coming when they're not going to be sound doctrine. And you know something? No sound doctrine. Our children in problem, you know? Our children in problem. Our children growing up in our hells. In, in, in our house and you tell me they're going to split where hell wide open the bible said the books is going to be open the books are going to be open we are like a flappy thing and if your name is not written in the lamb's book of life you know some of you are going to be barefaced enough jesus you know you're going to be barefaced enough to say check the book again because i was healing i was praying i was doing this thing here and he's going to turn to you and say, Depart from me, work of iniquity. He said, In the last days, before I leave my house this morning, you know what the breaking news was? Iran was bossing bombs over an Israel. The Bible said, When you see these things, look up. It is close. It may not be where Jesus comes down right away, but it may be the time when you go to. He said, Testing. And the trial is going to begin, begin in the house of the Lord. Let us secure ourselves. I don't want when I talk to you, I become a castaway. And I don't want you to be a castaway. So we're hoping that we see each other over there. Because I don't want a drop of water. I want the whole bottle. Alright? Okay. Praise the Lord. This song here. I'm going to try a thing. Yeah. Can't sing too good, I try a thing all the time. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Kyle. I said, Rand, Randa was doing a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to try a thing. Yeah. Praise his name. Yeah. Praise his name. I don't know about tomorrow. Just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn. For I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him. For I know what he Tomorrow, I 
You know he want he get jealous because of Connie, so he want to do something to her. I, I can't I can't deny him, right? So come, brother Bass. I'm a very jealous brother. Okay, that's what he said. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? If you had looked, let's say two years ago, and see that we're going to be here, huh? I mean, this is a miracle. Isn't God good? Amen. We look at things that happen in our lives, and we look back today. We can say, look what God has done. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Many of us. Some of us had was we sick, have pain. Yes. But God still have us. Yes. We are strong. Yes. Hallelujah. In Him. We are strong. He is our deliverer. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I just want to bless you with this song. Okay? Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. Oh. Come 
on, sing it to me. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. Look what the Lord has done. Our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We have seen what the Lord has done. and worship the Lord. Come on. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Again, just sing it. Look what From bushes to land. That's the land. We clean the land and now we are worshiping. Soon we're gonna have our building. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're so glad to have a young man with us today. The first time I met him, man was saying this guy is such a good guy. We had the computer class at UVI. The beginning class, and um, he was our instructor. He not only teach, but he gave us some jokes, you know, and I was really impressed. And um, the brother have an anointing on his life. Young man, because they are strong, isn't it? And they have vision. Pastor Matthias Clavia. He was born on the island of St. Croix, born right here. Yeah. And he was raised in a godly household with his parents Amen. and six siblings. Wow. Yeah. From birth, he attended the Fredericksted Baptist Church where he learned about God and gave his life to Christ. Yeah. He was baptized at an early age and as a young man, he felt the call of God on his life but was reluctant to answer it. After several years of the urging of the Holy Spirit, Pastor Clavier willingly answered the call to be a minister in the year of 2010. For many years, he served as a youth pastor and became the youth pastor in 2010. Currently, he serves as the associate and youth pastor of the Fredericksted Baptist Church. He is a man who loves the Lord and believe that the best life to live is a God-filled life. Amen. God bless you. We welcome Amen. our brother, our pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise God, everybody. Come on, praise God, everybody. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Because of him, I live. Amen? Because of him, I can move. Hallelujah. It's all because of Jesus. You know, it's such a blessing to be here. We would say under the tent. I would say in the church. Amen? Because we are the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. And because we are the church, I'm so happy to be in church this morning. Because when I'm in Fredericksburg Baptist Church, First Assembly of God, uh, whatever church I'm in, I am with my brothers and sisters. Amen. Oh, glory. Glory be to God. And today is Men's Sunday. Would the men in the house just stand for a moment, just for a moment. 
just for a moment, the men in the house. Amen, amen. Let's recognize them with a, just a, a high clap. Thank you so much. As we thank God for each and every man who did receive it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My message today is growing into the man that God wants me to be. Because this year we are talking about growth. And for men, I want us to grow in the place that God has for us. Amen? I would like to just introduce briefly the people who came with me and my wife sends her apologies. You know the devil busy? She woke up this morning, pain, pain, pain. And so as she tried to get ready because she wanted to be here, there was so much pain. I could see it in her. I said, you know what? You take it easy. You cool out. Because you know I don't want you to come here and your face there twist, twist. <laughs> because you are in so much pain amen and sometimes we have to recognize that as men uh, that, that you know the, the, the lady she wants to be here but right now the body just doesn't permit so she says to just give you her greetings but I did come with my cousin Booker T would you stand Booker thank you my son Kado Kado Matthias come on would you stand with people Amen. Praise God. We have Lily Rose, a friend of the family. And Prince that is up and down the place. Yes, the little baby. And so we thank God that, you know, we, we, we are able to have that uh, individuals come and support us. Amen. I want to give thanks to Brother Boss for the invitation. And the uh, shepherd of the house, uh, Pastor Wilson, I uh, thank you for allowing me to speak this morning. Amen. If you don't mind, I would just uh, ask us, let's stand and, as I pray, and then we get right into the word yes. of Almighty God. Yes. So my message, well, let me first read the, the one scripture verse, then I'll pray. Uh, the message is coming from Titus 2, verse 1 and 2, and it says, But as you know, speak the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in the faith, in love, and patient. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, God, for your word, oh God. I pray, oh Father God, that it will go out, oh Father God, and Father God, that hearts will be, 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 be softened and touched, oh God, and, and minds will be open, oh Father God, to what you have for their life. And if there's anyone under the tent that don't know you for the pardon of their sins, God, I pray, oh God, that their life will be changed forevermore. That they would realize that they are losing out if they don't trust and serve this God that we are speaking of. I thank you for your men right now, God. I pray that they will take the rightful place, oh God. That they would stand, oh God, for you. And so, Father, as I speak to the men mainly, Father God, I pray that you would just work in their hearts and in their minds that impact will come. And where the change needs to be made, that they would make it. Yeah. I pray most of God, of all, God, that you would allow me to speak, thus saith the Lord yeah. only. Yeah. Shut up in my mouth anything of pride, oh Father God, yeah. or of the flesh. Yeah. Anything that I would want to make me be seen instead of you, God. Crucify it now to the cross of Calvary. Father God, I don't want them to say, Pastor Murphy, but say that God has done a work today. And so, Father, we rest everything in your hand. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. In first excuse me, in Titus chapter 2, verse 1, it says, But as you, and so when he says, But as you, I believe he's talking to someone specifically. Or oh, oh, a group of people. And then when it says the age men, I believe he's talking to men. Amen? Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Uh, men, you could turn to somebody and say, he's talking to me. Talking. Come on, the men in the crowd, just turn to a lady, turn to a fellow man and say, he's talking to me. He says that we need to speak the things, come on now, the thing that becomes what? Song doctrine. Yes. And you know, we're living in a world where people talk all kind of foolishness and say it's the kingdom of God. We're living in some difficult times where men are coming up with their own confusion and saying it is of God. Yeah, come on, India. I'm with you. I want to just list five things that I believe men we ought to realize. Amen? The first thing I want you to know that you are the leader of your home. Women say amen. 
Come on, ladies. They say amen. amen. Men, we have been put at the helm. We have been put in leadership because the Bible declares in Ephesians 5 and verse 23, it says this, for the husband, a lady shout husband, husband. is the head of the wife. Men say wife. wife. Okay. And so Christ is the head of the church and he what? Is the savior of the body. Come on, somebody. You know, eyes a man that don't stay still. Come on, someone. And so the Bible is telling me that men, we are the head. Come on, someone. And so we ought to lead our family. Come on, somebody. And, and, and he's not talking about Fidel Castro or Putin, if you understand what I'm saying. You're not a dictator in your home, but you're a leader. You, you're not supposed to say my way or the highway, but you're supposed to say, as I follow God, you follow me. Come on, you're right there. Men, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You're not a dictator in the home, but God said women follow them. Because God ought to speak to me, hallelujah. And as he speaks to me, he gives me guidance and direction that I can lead my household in the fear of Almighty God. But to lead, we ought to be men of God. We have to then, the Bible declares to us, we have to put on the new man. Yes. Ephesians 4 and verse 24 tells it, it says this to me this way, it says, And that ye put on what? The new man. Which is after what? God is created in what? Righteousness and through what? Holiness. You see, I, I, when I was walking in sin, I wasn't ready to lead. I had to turn my life around by submitting to Almighty God. Amen. And so I had to take off. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I had to remove some things that was a part of me. And if you don't mind me taking off. Amen. Yeah. But I had to take off some things. Yeah. And the word declares that I have to put on something new. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bass. And so when I put on the new man, come on, somebody. You see that something is different. Turn to your neighbor and say, something is different. You don't have to tell anyone. They can see that I no longer am the old man created in iniquity. Come on, somebody. But I was I was put, I put on the new man created in righteousness. And so the things I used to do, come on somebody, I do them no more. If you, if the songwriter said, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I am blessed. I'm a what? A testimony. If I tell you I grew up in the Paradise Project and I used to be a little gangster, are you hearing me? I, I, I used to look at running drugs, somebody, did you know that? I, I, I once had a gun, if you understand me, and I walked around with it, but God said, take off that old man, and someday, and I put on the new robe, created in righteousness. I no longer hang out on the block. Men, Sometimes you have to put away things. You know when I got married? Come on, somebody. I got married and I start staying home more. The boys them came. They said, boy, that woman got you whip. You then tie down, ball and chain. And I start feel a little how, you know? I'm a rooster. And so I, 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 I kind of you know, don't want them to tease me. But praise God I had on the new man. Because the Holy Ghost said, you're stupid. They ain't coming home with you, no. The headache you're going to face at home. When you want to go lime with the boys all the time. You alone going to face it while they single backside enjoying themselves. I told them, listen. When it's time to go. It's time to go. 
I said, life has changed. I said, when you get married, you're going to understand. Sometimes we have to use wisdom, men of God, uh, because we can't follow the single men and get ourselves in trouble when we get home. You are a new creature. All things have passed away. They say, behold, all things will become new. We truly have to put off the old things for God to work in our lives. Your wife should be one of the people then who could testify of the goodness of God, man, yes. in your life. Yes. Yes. You, you see, sometimes we want to make what we, I call the titanic sin. Mm -hmm. Or mistake, I should say, the titanic mistake. Anybody know about the titanic? Yes. The ship that was what? Unsinkable. Did it sink? <laughs> the arrogance of man. And it sink on the first journey. God had a message for man. You think you're bad? But the little iceberg better than you. And they say it was a huge iceberg. The, the, the theory was that, because it had, I don't know if you know the, 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 oh, hey, man, the, tech, the technical part of it is that it had like five, I believe, compartments. Yes. And they said that it had to damage at least three or more compartments to sink. Yes. And they said, well, usually only one compartment get hit, mm. maybe two, but it's not going to hit all three. So, for years they believe that what happened is the Titanic hit the iceberg and it scraped the side in such a way that it ruptured all three or more of them. But when they found the ship at the bottom of the sea, what they realized is one compartment was damaged. But when one compartment got damaged, the water that came in and how that compartment got damaged, it bust the others and it impacted the others. You see, you can't have a little sin in your life and expect that it's not going to be like a cancer and, and, and destroy your entire being. Are you hearing me, people of God? Men, are you hearing me today? You can't be a good father and a bad husband. You can't be a good deacon in church and a slothful worker at home. At, at your job. You, you can't be holier than thou in church and different when you go home. It is going to impact your entire life. Yes. Don't make, thank you, the titanic mistake because you have to make sure you put off all sin. Men, if I could tell you this, in Hebrews 1, 12 and verse 1, it says, Wherefore, See, we also are encompassed about with such a great cloud of what? Witnesses. Let us know what? Lay aside what? Every weight and the sin that what? Easily beset us. Amen. We have to set aside some weights. We need to let go of the things and men, when we talk about things that easily beset us, we're going to talk about it but what are the two things that te tends to beset us? The love of the flesh and the love of the antichrist of life. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to sum it up in two words. The money and the honey. As men, we tend to get sidetracked easily by the money and the honey. Brother Bukati, my cousin, would you come for me just a minute? I want to demonstrate something quickly for you. We have to wait. And it's heavy. Come, put, put this on your back. Well, well, first, first, first. Give me a jump. Jump as high as you can. All right, good, good. Now let's lay on you the weight. Not a side like the Bible say. Put the weight on you. You heavy? Yeah. Jump high as you can now. Uh -huh. Men, sometimes we weigh down. And the Bible says to set aside what? Every weight. But you know what we do? We jump in our bag. We say, yeah, man, I'm going to set aside some of the weight, you know. The Bible says, the Bible says, well, lay aside the weight, no problem, no problem. I'm going to do that. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out the weight. Yes. My God. We're gonna take out the weight. We're gonna drop him down. It was heavy. Drop him down. We take out. No man, that one too cute. We put it back. So we say we take out the weight. Jump up. Still not ready yet. It's a lay aside what he said. The gods are lay aside. So until we drop it down, now jump again. Oh, no. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, my brother. Go ahead and have a seat. Man, the first thing if you ought to lead, because the Bible says we are the leader of our home. Come on, somebody. And I want you to know when I think about family, I think about husband and wife. If you have children, God bless you. But the husband and wife, I believe, the central, the nucleus of the family that brings about children and other things. And my Bible tells me, man, if you find a wife, you find a what? Good thing. Hallelujah. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Let's talk about the honey and the money. You see, it, 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 we, we know it, Joshua, in Joshua 7 and verse 10 to 12, it talks about when Israel couldn't stand before the enemy because Achan had what? The accursed thing among his stuff. Are you hearing me? So Achan saw something and it looked good. And Achan said, man, what God talking about? Let me, let me just take this little thing, put it in the camp, and it mess up the whole camp. The people of Israel couldn't stand before the enemy. The house cannot stand if the man has some sin, come on, come on, in his stuff. You have to know that you are the leader, and because you are the leader, you have to lay aside all your sins. That's when you'll be able to stand against your enemy. So that was the money because Achan said, you know, this is going to bring me some money someday. This is going to be good. You see, Ben, when we start to justify our sins, we're in problem. It's, a, it's just a little lie and it's just a little this and you know, I just taking the stapler home because they didn't pay me, you know. No, if, the, if something is on the job, if you want to be paid more, ask for a raise. Leave the people them thing alone. Even it's a pencil they call stealing. <laughs> Let's talk a little about the honey now. Boy, honey, I'm telling you, you know, it's rough these days, man. It's rough. Uh, and maybe God knows why the wife is not here, because I'll tell her close, it'll just block her ears a little bit. <laughs> Yesterday, not the day before. Yesterday, I was at work. And I walked going up one of the stairs then. A young lady come. As she turned in front of me. I said, Lord, she come out with her panty. Oh, my Lord. Think short, so, yes. so, so. And then they have holes. Yes. I said, but what are going on here? <laughs> As I walked behind her, men, you know, we, 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 we. I, I had to look to the father. Come on, somebody. Because if I continue to walk behind her, and I stare in at that, come on, somebody. She was blessed in places, but she wanted to show the world how blessed she was. And I said, Lord, before I lost, let me look to Jesus. I started saying, how great thou art. How great thou art. I let her walk. And after she walked, I said, now it's safe for me to go. Men, you have to see sin and flee, the Bible say, from the sin. Sometimes you know you see the lady, she got a Coca-Cola back and shape, and you know you're lost in after her. And instead of you get out of the place, you come and start talking to her. Hey sister, how you doing today? Run for your life. I don't know about you, brother boss, but but until I did. I can always see when a woman look nice. But the only person I should have eyes for is my wife. 
And so me, call me coward, I don't run. You're right, you're right. I want you to understand the second thing that we need to seek God first in everything. First Samuel 30 and verse 8 tells me this. It says, so David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, hallelujah, pursue, for you shall surely take over them and will not fail to recover all. That's when David uh, uh, went in Ziklag and I, he lost and the men were, uh, the wives and, and children were taken away. And, and God, David then said, wow, they take my children. They take my wife. No, man, I gone. He didn't just jump on horse and say, chariot, let's go. The Bible declared, men, that David inquired of God. First thing I want you to know, you are the leader, but you're not qualified to lead unless you're safe, sanctified, and have put off all the weight. Secondly, I want you to go ahead and seek God first in everything. You see, God, God is our GPS system. Are you hearing me? I don't know if you, but when I go to the States, I have to use the GPS. Here we can say, you know, turn out the coconut tree and so forth and so on. In the, in the mainland, that, that, that don't work too good. That don't work too good. I got 10 coconut trees look the same. So you have to use the GPS. And I remember one time, my wife was in the passenger side. I was driving in, in Florida. And the GPS, you know, and I, was, I wasn't too familiar with it, but, you know, I'm the driver. And you know, sometimes men, we could be a little. So she, 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 she said, this is the turn. I the driver. I didn't think it was the turn. And then we have to recognize when the woman is better at some things than us. Yes, I right there. May I just speak to you a moment. Being a leader doesn't mean you cannot follow. Come on, somebody. That's right. Sometimes if the, if the wife is better at something, you give her the authority to lead in that area. Yes, Come on, somebody. Yes. And then that you follow her and yes. sometimes you even learn from her. Yes, that's the truth. That is the truth, sir. Yes, sir. And women, if I could speak to you as well, if the man is leading and better in an area, yes. don't feel bad to be submissive. Some women have problems with that to your husband. Yes, you're right. Because you guys are supposed to work together. Your victory is my victory. Your success is my success. If they say the Bible tells me that the two shall become one. If we can't get right in the home, how are we going to get right in the church? I don't know. I can't get you. I don't know. I can't envy what my wife is doing. No. I have to I have to be so encouraged, blessed, and, and just so appreciative when, when, when I see what my wife is doing. Yes. Oh, God. Same thing with the wives. Yes. Let me get back to the GPS now. <laughs> so we drive in. She said, take this one. I said, no. Oh, yeah. I, uh, then I, I, hear, I, I heard the, 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 the thing that you don't want to hear. Rerouting. Uh -huh. Rerouting. Uh -huh. That don't tell me I wrong. Yeah. So me this is quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> and usually it's a minute or two they reroute you and you just go. No problem. This particular time I said God was showing me something. Tell your neighbor God was showing him something. <laughs> and so the GPS now said rerouting, rerouting, but it tell, told me to drive for another how many miles before I could reach the next exit. It was about 15, 20 minutes before we got back on track. The, the exit I was supposed to take, the next one was so far down the line. And after I took that, I had to do some circle and some rigmarole before we got back on track. Praise God, she sat quietly in the passenger side. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for women who don't nag you and punch you every time. Come on, somebody. Even when you're wrong, sometimes they, they, they just be humble. Yes, and that's how it's supposed to be, but they're not. <laughs> but God showed me that day that, you know, my wife is better at the navigation stuff. Listen to her. Yes. Man, I want you to 
inquire of God. Let him be your GPS. Let him guide you in what he wants you to do. The Holy Spirit in me ought to be the one leading and not me of myself. The third thing I want you to notice that spend some time, quality time, with your family. Sometimes we could be out there doing so many things, but the, the, the responsibility in the home is our greatest responsibility. As a pastor, I can't neglect my son and do all ministry work and have him neglected at home. The first thing that he gave you is your wife. Amen? Proverbs 18 and verse 22 tells me this. It says, he who findeth a wife, hallelujah, findeth a good thing. And obtain what? Favor from the Lord. When you see your wife, you should see your favor. Men, are you hearing me? Because he says, I obtained favor from the Lord because I found it a wife. And so she is my favor. And so when I see her, even when, you know, sometimes, you know, they don't behave right, just like we don't behave right at times. But even when they're not behaving right, she is still my favor. She's still my wife. She's still the blessed uh, gift that God has given to me. And so I had to be able to treat her with that love and compassion. And in Titus, uh, one of the things that it tells us that we need to be what? Patient. You know, sometimes you say, how much I got time I'm going to talk to you? You continue because God has given you a blessed wife. I can't tell you, I wish you were here. Make us stand up and pray to see my blessing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because each one of us who are married, and if you're not married, pray for your blessing. Yeah. Amen. The single ladies, they say they're going to look for men for are you. <laughs> hey. Somebody said that up here, they said they're going to bring them and them in. Yeah. The men are going to come. So as you see them come, start picking them out. To God be the glory. I want to say to you, the, the men that when you were courting the, your, your wife, you remember how that used to be? Come on, somebody. You used to take her out. You probably bought her stuff. You speak sweet words in her ears. Are you with me? You get married. It's that slow down. One year pass, two year pass, three year pass, five year pass, ten year pass. When last you went on a date? When last you told her, boy, you look good tonight? When last you show up and bring a present just because your minds? You got to treat your wife better than you treat her when she was your girlfriend. That's right. I'm your wife. I'm not your girlfriend. Because she has been elevated Amen. to a different level. If I could encourage you to set aside maybe at once a week or once every other week, but you set aside a day and say it's date night, baby. So the third of every month we're going out. What you want to do. How, because your relationship with your wife should be that image of your relationship with God. Amen. And if you don't have a good relationship with men in the, with your wife, then how do you have a good relationship with Almighty God? I, know, yes, sir. I can't tell you. Yes, sir. The next thing is your children. Yeah. Your children is the, is the next thing that you should know you need to spend some time with your children. Yeah. Proverbs 25, excuse me, 22 and verse 6, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not what? Depart from me. Spend time with your children. You know, men, we could work, and, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. When my son was born, I start working and you know, doing good work, teaching the computer class, all of those things. I'm out late and so forth and so on. When he started to be two and three years old, I realized, boy, I ain't spending much time with my son, you know. I'm working, I'm going 7, 8 in the morning, I'm coming back 6, 7 at night. By the time 8, 9, or 8, 8.30 is his bedtime. Yeah. I spend about an hour or two typically and then gone. 
My wife started complaining about it. I'm macho. I'm walking, man. I'm making the money. What happened? I'm making the money. But praise God, the Holy Spirit said, no. It's more than just the money. You got to give your son some time. I went to my supervisor. I said, listen, I usually hear late and so forth and so on. But Monday is going to be the day that I go and pick up my son and spend the rest of the day with him. Amen. My supervisor said, okay, no problem. You make it up these days. So, so from, for about three or four years now, every single Monday, once I am on St. Croix, I leave work at 2.30, 3 o'clock. I go pick him up from school and we do whatever he wants to do that the afternoon. Spend some time with your children. They need you to impact their lives and you don't know when it will happen. You see, and what I remember of my father, God rest his soul, is that not the stuff he gave me, but the experience we had together. Come on, somebody. I remember him putting me on his lap and teaching me how to drive when I was too short to reach the gas pedal. He took us into a, a place like this where just they didn't have roads or anything, it just open field. And he put me on his lap and he said, Steer the car wheel and he holding the bottom so I can't see. So he helping me drive, but I think I doing it on my own. I remember him taking me fishing. Come on. I remember how, how, how loving and kind he was. I remember how he was passionate about the things of God. And he taught us about the things of Almighty God. That's it. That's it. That's it. I remember the important lessons he taught me. You know, one time we were, he was a fisherman and he said, come, 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 go sell, come help me sell fish. And even when they don't want to do it, drag them sometimes. Amen. Yeah. He said, let's go sell fish. He went back up his cooler, put it in the back of the truck. He driving, I driving. In the passenger side, and we going. And we reach Grove. I'll never forget it. We reach Grove. I see a couple of my friends. And I know they're going to tease me. My father had two robin in his hand. And he would drive around. Fish, fish, $10 a pound, $10 a pound, fish, fish. And as he drive, he's talking. I saw shame, sister, you know. I start getting shorter. As I start getting shorter, my father realized I duck so low, I out of sight. Powerful man of God. He said nothing. He continued selling his fish, doing whatever, whatever, whatever. After we left Grove, I get taller. Drive around, go. He uh, reach, we reach home, we unpacking. He turned to me, he said, son, never be ashamed of making an honest dollar. You see that? You see that? Honest. All of the things he gave me, I can't tell you, I remember not even two of them. But I remember that. It impacted me all my life and it will continue to impact me. So whether I need to sweep the floor or sit in the president's chair, once it's an honest dollar, I'm okay with it. But I got that because my father included me in his business. And the next day when he was going to sell the fish, he didn't call me. I, I made him feel bad, right? So I came and I felt real bad. I came, Daddy, I could come with you. He said, if you want to, but I, I could do it myself. He was hurt. I understood that. But I jumped in the, the, the car and when we hit Grove, I said, give me the fish. I put it out. I said, $10 a pound, $10 a pound. My father influenced me in such a way I didn't care what my friends had to say. Because he told me if there was really my friends, they wouldn't tease me about the food, the money that is bringing food to put in my mouth. Yes. 
pray with your children. Another thing that I have in my home is that every night I pray with my son. And if I'm away, he calls me. We pray almost every single night. Sometimes my wife does it, depending on if I knock out first. But most of the times, I want to make sure that I pray with my son. So men, I would say pray for them and pray with them. Amen? Fourth thing, I'm almost done. Two more. The road, my brothers, will not always be easy. First Peter 4, 12 and 13 tells me this. Behold, beloved, excuse me. Do not think it strange concerning the fiery darts, which is what? Is there to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. But do what? Rejoice to the extent that you are partakers of Jesus' suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may what? Also be glad with exceeding joy. This road going to be rough. The devil going to put stumbling blocks. They're going to put things. Sometimes you have to make some hard decisions and they ain't going to like you. You know, my whole teenage years, I thought my father was a stumbling block and a rock of offense. I didn't like him much at all, at all. But I thank God before he passed, I was able to tell him, Daddy, I love you so much for what you did for me. Remember I tell you I was a bad boy? Boy, Daddy mash up all kind of drug deal I was having. Because he won't take his eyes off of me. He tell me I can't go movies. He says, well, I can't go movies to do. He don't want me to go dance. I said, but it's okay. girl, I look in. What do you want me to do? Yeah. Well, all of that thing. I said, Daddy blocking all my movements. Yeah. Oh, God. The, he was so strict. He tell me, when you see the lights on, you need to be in my house. Uh-huh. Yeah. Street light turn on, you better be home. That's when things just start into nice in the, in the project. Uh-huh. The things that I would have gotten into uh-huh. by, by the grace of God, Daddy blocked so many of those yes. things. Yes. And I could say, thank you. You know, sometimes the children ain't going to understand right oh. away. Oh. You want them to be, oh, daddy, this. no, no, no. Sometimes they ain't going to like you. It's true. It's true. It's true. But you have to continue to do what God has called you to do. Turn to the turn to women, turn to one of the men around you and say, it ain't always gonna be easy. But I'm gonna tell you the last thing I have for you today. It says, Don't believe the lies of the enemy. The theme of this, and this is where I want to wrap it up, it says rebuilding the family. And right now, they're trying to redefine what family means. They're talking about same sex. What? You show me in the word of God. The family is male, female, and if you're blessed, children. Are you with me, saints of God? We we don't have male and male and female and female. That is outside of the will of my God. And so I know if I'm going to Go ahead and build a family. I have to build it the way that God intended it to be built. Even if you look on Google these days, the the dictionary from 20, 30, 40 years ago, define the family different than they're defining it today. They're trying to corrupt your mind. But Romans 12 and verse 2 tells me this, it says, And do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may be able to prove what is good and acceptable. Come on, somebody. The perfect will of God. So the acceptable, perfect will of God teaches us how we ought to live. We can't let this word change our thinking because um, psychologists and scientists and doctors and these people who think they know more than God, it is foolishness. Men, don't believe the lies. Believe the truth of Almighty God. You see, you can't stand on the word of men. 
You know, I tell people, I, I always try to speak the truth. I always. But even when I have all mine to do it, sometimes it don't come to fruition. I will say, Brother Bass, I'm going to come by your house tomorrow to fix that computer for you. His brother Bass said, you going to come? Said, yeah, man, I'm going to come. What time? Four o'clock. I go to work. Belly start hot. I go back home. I am the toilet whole day. I forget brother Bass. I had all intentions of doing what I said I would do. But things happen in our lives. That's why I don't stand on man's word, but I stand on the word of Almighty God. Amen. Psalm 16, and I'm almost done. Verse 8, it says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Men, set the Lord before you at all times. You know the brother Kevin, is he still here? He blessed my heart with the... Is he here? He had to leave, no problem. And then my brother, what is it, Watley? Crichton? Okay, you're the one who sang, right? Come, 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 come. Help me out a little here. He blessed me too. Amen? He said he's going to try a thing. If I try a thing, I may clear the tent. You just come. You don't have to sing. Oh, God. No, no. You just come. You just come. Yeah. You're going to be God. I've given you a big role. Yeah. This is God. Yeah. If you haven't seen him, you see him now. Yeah. Right. You know, there's a story about that. A little girl was drawing. And the teacher said to her, what are you drawing? She said, I'm drawing God. Mm. But the teacher said, nobody knew what God looked like. She said, well, when I finish, all will know. And so the little girl had faith that she would be able to draw God. So, God, you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. Where is God in your life is my question to you. Is he beside you? Is he behind you? Or does he go before you? Because the Bible declares that because he goes before me. Go a little bit, brother. And he's at my right hand. That's the, usually the powerful hand we have, right? He's yes. before me at my right hand. I shall not be moved. And so the wind can blow. The floods can come, man. But if we set God in his place, because God is a, he's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. He's a God of compassion. He, he is not going to force himself in our lives. He's waiting for us to put him in his place. In his place. Too many times we invite God to our plans. When we should be inquiring of God, what is your plan for my life? You can't say, well, I'm going to build this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then you say, God, help me with this plan. Don't invite God to your plan. Make sure he is the one planning your life. And so once God is here, the word declares, I shall not be moved. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, saints of God. If God has spoken to you today, and sometimes we could be a little shy, don't worry about what anybody around you will think. He been to church how many times you walk in? No, no, no. You and God. That's what this is about. When you come, you don't have to come and tell me anything. Take it to Jesus. If you want, I can pray with you. Pastor is here, he can pray with you. But you can come and take it to the altar all by yourself. That's right. Whether you are male or female, if God has spoken to your heart this morning and he said there's some things in your life you need to change. As they will sing a song, it's an invitation for you to come. 
more importantly, if you have never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today is the day. This world is getting crazy by the second. They talk, I didn't even know about the, the war and, and, and Iran or whoever is bombing Israel. I didn't even know that. I woke up this morning to a live wire. The devil is a liar. Live electrical wire in front of my gate. Police was there. WAPA came. Took my power. I had to run by my father-in-law. Press my clothes to come here. I had to go back like it's um, Hugo time. Catch water from the buffalo to be. But my God. He goes before me. So as you come. Don't let anything stop you. From doing what God has placed on your heart. If he's telling you to come. You come. Because you don't know what tomorrow holds. As this world is getting more and more crazy by the minute. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning, God, that you've given me an opportunity to speak to your people. And as I have spoken, oh God, I pray that I have said what thus said the Lord is. And Father, that lives will be impacted and changed for the glory of Almighty God. So I rest everything in your hands and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you and God bless. today for speaking from God and God has been good and his word is alive I don't want you to go back to your trespasses and sin but I want us to draw closer to God men rise up and be counted take your place God is waiting for you praise God Praise God. We want to take a special love offering for our brother this morning. Praise God. Brother, El Kings, come and help us today. After which you're going to pray for the needs. After the offering, okay? Pray for the needs of the church. Will you come and give our brother a special offering today? God bless you. Praise God, hallelujah. 
me to pray for the needs in, of the church and uh, as I was thinking about this I was thinking about how Daniel prayed a prayer of repentance and I think that one of the greatest needs that we have today is for revival yes. and for God to change our hearts and so I'm going to read uh, before I pray Daniel chapter 9 this is Daniel's prayer now you know Daniel, he wasn't guilty of these sins that he was confessing. He was an obedient servant. But he confessed the sins of the nation. And we have many sins for our nation that we need to pray for. Because right now, it, as, the, as our guest speaker today was telling us, the world is coming unraveled. And um, we, we need God. Amen. So, Daniel chapter 9, verse 4. He goes, I pray to the Lord my God. Now I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. I pray to the Lord my God and confessed and said, O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps His covenant and faithfulness for those who love Him and keep His commandments, we have sinned. We have done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. Moreover, we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our leaders, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Righteousness belongs to you, Lord, but to us open shame. As it is this day to the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those who are nearby, and those who are far away, and all the countries to which you have driven them because of their unfaithful deeds which they have committed against you. Open shame belongs to us, Lord, to our kings, our leaders, and our fathers because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong compassion and forgiveness because we have rebelled against him and we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his teachings which he set before us through his servants, the prophets. Indeed, all Israel has violated your laws and turned aside, not obeying your voice. So the curse has gushed forth on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So he has confirmed his word, which he has spoken against us and against our rulers who rule us, to bring on us great disaster. For under the entire heaven there has not been done anything like was done in Jerusalem just as it is written in the law of Moses all this disaster has come on us yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our wrongdoing and given attention to your truth so the Lord has kept the disaster in store and brought 
in on us. For the Lord our God is righteous with respect to all his deeds which he has done, but we have not obeyed his voice. And now, Lord our God, you brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made a name for yourself. As it is this day, we have sinned. We have been wicked. Lord, in accordance with all your righteous acts, let now your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem. <coughs> we can say, we can put, we can paraphrase that and say, Lord, please turn your wrath away from America yes. and the Virgin Islands, Hallelujah. your holy mountain, because of our sins and the wrongdoings of our fathers. Jerusalem and your people have become an object of taunting to all those around us. So now, God, please listen to the prayer of your servant and to his pleas for your sake. Lord, let your face shine on your desolate sanctuary. My God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolation in the city which is called by your name. For we are not presenting our pleas before you based on any merits of our own. No, it's not because of anything we've done, but based upon your great compassion. Lord, hear. Lord, forgive. Lord, listen and take action. For your sake, my God, do not delay because your city and your people are called by your name. Let's pray. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we come before you. And Lord, we are a needy people. And Lord, just as Daniel prayed a prayer of repentance for the nation, we pray a prayer of repentance for our nation because, Lord, we have sinned against you. We have turned away from you. We have turned against the moral principles of God's commands. Lord, please forgive our sins and forgive us, Lord, as one preacher said, sins of commission and omission, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, today we thank you that you hear and answer our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the promises of God. Lord, you said in First, in first Thessalonians 5 that if we, I'm sorry, First John chapter 5 that that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And this is the confidence that we have in Jesus, that if he hears us, then we know that we have received the petitions that we desire of him. Lord, today there are those in our midst, in our congregation that are in need of healing and a touch from you. We pray for Brother Watley and others, Lord, that have a need in their life, a need of healing, Brother Nurse and others, Lord, we pray, Lord, for comfort of the Holy Spirit to comfort Selena, Lord, since she's lost her mother. We pray for the Holy Spirit to give peace that only you can give, Lord. Only the peace of God that surpasses all understanding can comfort us during times of mourning. And, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you. And, Lord, we ask you to lead, guide, and direct our footsteps. Lead us in the path of righteousness. For your name's sake, Lord, help us, Lord, to live our life according to your commands and according to your principles and according to your precepts. Lord, we love you and we praise you, Lord, and we pray, Lord, for a mighty anointing to be upon our pastor, Pastor Wilson, as he leads this congregation. Lord, give him a double portion, a mighty anointing, Lord, as he leads our congregation. And Lord, help us all, Lord Jesus, to just let the love of God just invade our hearts and life and let the love of God shine forth through our lives that men can see that we are living our lives for the glory of God and point men to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to be a witness to those that come in, that, you, that you put in our path, Lord. Help us to be a witness, Lord, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ because, Lord, we know that it's not by works, lest any man should boast, but it's all the grace of God. And we're so grateful, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. We cannot thank you enough, Lord, for all your blessings. We receive them now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Before uh, Brother Dylan comes with today, announcement, I want you to hear this. Don't run off to your home. There's plenty to eat and drink and fellowship. And please talk to somebody. Stay around. Stay around and talk to somebody. There are lots of food, lots of things to eat. On behalf of the men of First Assembly of God. Brother Dylan, come to today's announcement.
Thank you, Brother Sage. And pleasant good morning. These are the announcements for, uh, for this week. We have Bible Expo this evening. And as our usual time, it will be live at 6 p.m. on the different platforms, Zoom, YouTube, and on the conference call line. We had Sunday school here this morning. This is Sunday morning. And Sunday at the sanctuary in town, it's our Sunday school hour at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning, and we have a class for everyone. Amen. For this week, it's the same, Breakfast in the Word, Monday through Friday, 5.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock on the conference call line. On Tuesdays, it's prayer and fasting. We have prayer meeting at 6.30 p.m. in the evening. That's on the conference call line. And every Saturday morning, right here on these grounds, it's prayer meeting. Right here at Barron Spot, and all are invited. We have a, an event coming up on Saturday. It's the Peninsula of Florida and the Virgin Islands Leadership Conference. And that will be held next Saturday. Oh, I lose. Saturday. Yeah, this Saturday. Let me get closer to the. Up there. It's reloading. But I can tell you, it's uh, at the same Give me a minute. Technology. Let me take it. Pass me the computer. Just pull the plug. Let me take it from the computer. Okay. Okay, so at the St. Croix Christian Academy, we are doing enrollment for the school year 2024-2025. And uh, that is in progress. We have an early boat special, which is if you register before the 30th of April or by the 30th of April is a 10% discount and you can download the uh, the forms from the from the school website which is St. Croix Christian Academy dot org or you can call the school at 718 of course 340 718 4974 with that said, we are also seeking uh, to fill the 
position that will be vacant soon for the uh, the principalship, our current principal, uh, is retiring. And so we're looking to fill the position. Uh, interested individuals can send a resume to the executive director, Mr. Seton Wilson, and his email is setondwilson at yahoo.com. Or you can make a call, have the conversation, and uh, you, can, you can go from there, 340-277. 9094. There will be a ushers training on Saturday, April the 27th. That will be from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the church. So, so all ushers and all potential of ushers are asked to be attend uh, to attend uh, this uh, training session. St. Croix Christian Academy has a free summer mass camp or music camp conducted by the Ashley Whitney Courier Foundation. And that will be held on Monday, June 17th to Friday, June 21st, 9 a.m. to 12 noon for children in grades 3 to 6. The reason why I'm announcing this early is because space is limited. There are only per uh, catering for 15 participants so if you know of someone in that age group of a child what have you and want to get in on that you need to do so early so I am putting it out very early you have a little time but you never can tell first 15 classes filled okay applications can be obtained from the school web page which is sincroychristianacademy.org. Okay. We have a march for Jesus coming up on the May the 18th, 2024 at 10 a.m. And um, it has been uh, voiced uh, several times, put on by uh, Sister Harella uh, Goodwin. And uh, this march would be from the Claude Omako uh, school to the Bodo Park. Um, for more information, you can reach out to 340 I want to thank all those who were out here on the grounds yesterday here at Baron Spot, and I want to uh, take a little time. We were up at the um, on the western fence up there. And I want to get shout, give a big shout out to Sister Lois. After the prayer meeting, she came up and she did her quota of stones. We're picking up stones and we are cleaning the fence line. And she did her quota. And I say that, actually throwing out uh, a sprat. Okay, hopefully I'll catch some um, <laughs> yeah, so if all that come to the prayer meeting when you are finished, you pitch a hand, you can make a remarkable uh, difference here on the grounds as we continue to keep the grounds in a respectable manner as we continue to labor here on the property. So our next uh, work day would be on the 27th at 9 a.m., 27th, April 27th at 9 a.m., we ask you to come out. Sorry, 8 a.m. They could come out and support the effort. We say condolences to our sister Selena uh, Thompson, who and the family, and the passing of her mother in Ghana, West Africa. And um, we want you to remember the entire family um, in prayer. Next Sunday is casual dress day. So feel comfortable to bring a friend and anyone that would come along and they don't have to dress them. You know, some people feel they have to be in this. Right, so we have a casual day that can come just as you are. Amen? Okay. 
I want to say a welcome back. I see, um, and Pastor mentioned it um, um, earlier, uh, Brother James, I'm back there. Nice having you, Brother James. You're back. We have a few birthdays uh, this week, and we have Chefari Cherry. He will be tomorrow on the 15th. We have uh, Merlin Felicien on the 18th. We have uh, Zakai Heiliger. Of course, he is off island uh, in college, but we still recognize those of our folks who are in college and those who are in the military. And so we say happy birthday to him on the 19th and Brother Arthur Kodra, who is recovering at home here on St. Croix from arm surgery. I think I have a couple more things. Let's see. Okay. All right. These are just for you to mark the date, and they, you're going to hear more of them as the, as the time gets closer. But St. Croix Christian Academy Sports and Fun Day, that is coming up on the May the 24th, and it will be right here at Barron's Park. How about that? Right here at Barron's Park. Okay? And uh, we have the promotion dates which would be K-5, would be on June the 11th at 10 a.m. And uh, the next day, June the 6th, it would be the 6th grade. And that would be at, uh, yeah, that would be on the 12th, also at 10 a.m. And the registration, we hear much of the, uh, the 2025 church reunion. We want to keep that um, going. And who saw the last uh, mail that came out? Yeah, and they are doing an awesome um, job. So look out for the registration form. It is being prepared and will be available soon. So hopefully you are thinking of being joining unless the Lord calls you uh, a home. Then that will be the great reunion. But uh, the one here on earth, we are looking forward to 2025 when those of us uh, and all of uh, First Assembly of uh, God, individuals who have passed through and who are still alive, wherever they are on this planet, coming together for a great reunion next year. And we are looking forward to that. Those are all the announcements that I have. I know Sister Vidal, ladies um, president, who have one, and she will come now to give her um, announcement. Praise the Lord, brethren. This is an invitation from Beeston Hill Wesleyan Holiness Church, and they're inviting the entire congregation to a inspiration that is planned for April 26th, that's Friday, April 26th at 7 o'clock at the church. All are invited. And they have asked the ladies for a selection. And we will be doing one. Uh, we will have practice on next Sunday, God's wedding, for the special that we will be presenting. So we are encouraging one and all to come out to those meetings. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have come to the end of our meeting, our service for today. And truly we have been blessed. Amen. Continue to pray for the man of God, that God will keep him, continue to use him for the honor and glory of the Lord. The pastor would like to meet with the uh, board of directors after we dismiss. Okay, uh, let me, God will say, I must re be reminded to thank Sammy. Sammy, you're here today? Yes. Stand up, let me see you. Yes. Sammy. Yes. 
Yesterday I stay up on the hill and watch him with a wheelbarrow. Yes. Bringing those chairs here, right? And the man bringing six chairs, you know. At a time in his wheelbarrow. He alone. Right? I was telling the guys up there, you know, when I was like Sammy, I couldn't pu push a wheelbarrow, you know. The bar would have been fall down. Yeah. And I watch him. Thank you very much, my friend. God bless you. Okay, so we're having a meeting for the board of directors for a few minutes. And then all of you, please don't go home and uh, consume what we have there, you know. We, we, uh, sorry, we didn't have a tent to put it out under, you know. You set up one bit, sister? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. You keep me there. God bless you. And we are going to continue to use this barren spot while we are alive, okay? Yeah. Feel free to come and worship with us. And if you have any suggestion, you could give us to us. Sister Diane, she's very approachable. If you have any suggestion about barren spot or area. God bless you. May we all stand and dismiss. <laughs> Sister Krishna Pin, you know today is Men's Day, right? Okay, so you're going to dismiss us in prayer. Ask God, yes, Father, and our God, we thank you for today. We thank you today, Lord, for the word of God. Today is men day, and Father, you give us the word. You not only give the men, but you give the women too. Help us to submit ourselves, because I tell you, over the years, I saw so many rudeness. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would not be standing here today. We got to change our ways and come together as the man of God said. God is the leader. He will guide you and he will direct you what to do. Let us come together as men and women. Not women against men and men against women. I live it. I was in America and I saw it. And I came to the Virgin Island and I saw it. And I don't like it. But I pray today that the word of God that went forth will change our mind yes. and bring us together as husband and wife. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless you and I praise you. Touch this man of God. Oh God, you said you call young men because they're strong. Oh God, you're letting them hear. You let them see and you're letting them speak it. Oh God, because they are going to run the church. They are the church, oh God. Hallelujah, we are the church. And you're calling our sons and daughters. They are the one who's going to take over when we are gone. So let us train them the right way. You heard what he said. Take care of your sons and your daughters. Pray with them. That's what I used to see my husband do. And I was pushing up my mouth and this and that. But now I see what he was saying. Because every time the children call, they say, thank God for my father. That he drilled the word of God in us every morning and every night. So I give God the praise. I give him the honor and I give him the glory. As he said, Michael called me morning, noon, and night. Mary and they prayed for me. As you hear the young man was saying, how his father prayed. That's what they're doing to me today. And I thank God for them because it could have been different. But for the grace of God, I give him praise. I give him honor and I give him glory. Strengthen every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every child that is under this tent today. And help us to be obedient unto you. In the name of Jesus, knowing that you are coming soon. Help us to be ready, not getting ready. Oh God, so many things are happening around us. But you say, when we see these things, we must look up for our redemption joy at night. God bless you, I love you, and God love you too. Continue, stay with God. Focus, focus. God bless you. Praise God. God bless you. Bless day. Praise him, praise him, praise him. All right.